Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm just going to go right into it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Let me decrease and you increase. Please say through me whatever you want me to want to say through me and let me get on out of the way, Lord God. Let me not say what you don't want me to say. Father, I just thank you. I pray that we'll all have hearts and ears to receive and hear. And Satan, I bind you. I bind every distraction. I bind your hindrance in this message or if you trying to do anything to affect this message, I bind it in the name of Jesus. And I loose ministering angels to do whatever God wants done with this word. Have your way, Lord God. Let it fall on good soil in all of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, a while back, it's been a good little while back, God gave me a message called Chosen, and this is Chosen Part 2. But I have to tell you, the whole time through, the, through studying for this, I've heard Pastor Carl say, it, 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 he said, I had a little trouble bringing, getting this message. I know exactly what you mean now. It was like a kind of a fight. Uh, but I believe that God gave me what he, what he wants me to say and what he wants us to go over. Chosen, part two. So first we're going to Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 through 8. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 through 8. Lord, help me, please. Okay. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Okay, we're going to jump over to 17, still same chapter, 15 and 19. Same, chapter 17 through verse, verse 15 through 19. Then God said to Abram, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name, and I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. Then God said, No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. So we're going to stop right there for a minute. Um, God has a covenant with Abraham and he blesses his seed. It's not plural, 
It just says seed. And Abraham is called God's friend. God talks with him and spends time with him. So he blesses him with a child, a miracle child, a child of promise in his old age. Now Abraham tried to mention the child of the flesh and God was like, no, that don't have anything to do with what I'm doing. This is a child of promise, Isaac. He's a miracle child because Abraham was 99 years old and Sarah was in her 90s. So he blesses Sarah to have the child and he promises Abraham a blessed inheritance from God. Okay, we're going to James 2.23, please. James 2.23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Okay, just keep that in your heart. We are going somewhere with all this. <laughs> now we're going to 2 Samuel 9, 6 through 12. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 6 through 12. And if you don't get there in your Bibles, it is up on the board. For time's sake, I'm going to try to... Just move it along. Um, so keep in mind, Isaac is a child of promise, and God made promises to, to Abraham about his offspring. Second Samuel 9, 6 through 12. Okay. So... A little background, David, you all know it, but I'm going to say it anyway. David is king. Saul was the king, and Saul got jealous of David and was trying to kill David. Now, Jonathan is Saul's son, and David and Jonathan were like this, two peas in a pod. They were just brothers of the heart. So they made a promise to each other. David said to Jonathan, if I anything happens to me, then you take care of my kids, my offspring. And he said to and Jonathan said to David, if anything happens to me, then you take care of my offspring. So because Saul was trying to kill David, Saul died in, an, in a war and hit all of his sons with him, including Jonathan, David's best, best tight friend. Okay, so now we're starting here. Now David said, is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And I'm in 2 Samuel chapter 9, starting at Oh, verse 1. I'm so sorry. I told you guys 6 through 12. I'm starting at 1. Now David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when Ziba had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, At your service. Then the king said, is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. So the king said, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, indeed, he's in the house of Mychar, the son of Amil in Lodabar. Lodabar is, means pastureless place, a dry place. Then the king sent and brought him out of the house of Marchar, the son of Emil, 
from Lodabar, that pastureless place. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. Then David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, here is your servant. So David said to him, do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Then he bowed himself and said, what is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? And the king called to Ziba, called Ziba, called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I've given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and to his house. He got a nice big inheritance. You, therefore, and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him, and you shall bring in the harvest, that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table always. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Ziba said to the king, according to my lord the king has commanded his servant, so, so will your servant do. According to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, so will your servant do. As for Ms. Phibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all, and all who dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants of Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he ate continually at the king's table, and he was lame in both feet. Now David's name means beloved. Mephibosheth means the mouth of shame. That's what those two names mean. Okay. Now we're going to um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. So this is in the Old Testament. And as you know, God a lot of times, well, it's called types and shadows, will set up things in a person's life to show us about things that are happening in the New Testament. We know that Jesus is God's beloved son. And we are going to Ephesians. Okay, we are going to Ephesians chapter one. Now we're gonna take a look at how we're chosen. We saw how God chose Isaac before he was born. We saw how David as a friend with Mephibosheth, because he was a friend of Jonathan, he went after his, his child and blessed his child to sit at his table all the days of his life and gave him a huge inheritance. We see how David's name is beloved and Mephibosheth's name means the mouth of shame because he came from Saul's family and we all know that's what Saul did. Okay, Ephesians 1. Blessed be the God and Father. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ephesians 1, 4. But I'm going to start at 3. Start at 3, please. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us his body with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him, in Jesus, before the foundation of the world, before he even made the planet, he chose us. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined, predestined means predetermined. So God 
predetermined. God decided before though he made the whole planet, he ha having predestined us to adoption as sons, as children. That sons there means children, male and female. By Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Okay, I'm all the way down at seven. I'm going to, well, I might as well continue because <laughs> we were gonna go to eight and through 10 next. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom, prudence, and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself. Wait, did I mess up? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm going to jump over to chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. The main point of that chapter, of that verse, is that we were chosen before God even made the planet in Christ Jesus. He had already, before you were born, before he made the planet, had already chosen each and every one of us that we would be his children and that we would be in his family and that we get to sit at his table forever. We're going to go forward and see more of that. Okay. Go to chapter 2, verse 8. I'm sorry, there was a little mix-up in me jotting down my, my scriptures. Chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared when? Beforehand, that we should walk in them. So he chose us and he prepared good works to do through us beforehand. We're going to go to John 6, 3, 37 through 39. John chapter 6, Gospel of John chapter 6, 37 through 39. And I won't be long before you. Okay. John 6, 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but shall raise it up at the last day. Um, I'm going to continue on the 40. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So we have been given to Jesus. We're going to go jump down to verse 44 in this same chapter. 644. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now flip over to still Gospel of John, same book. We're going to 15... Chapter 15, 16, and 17. Chapter 15, 
16 and 17. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Why? We his children. We're not going to ask for anything crazy. We're going to ask for things according to his will. It says, these things I command you that you love one another. Okay, Galatians. We're going to Galatians 3, 14 through 16. And we only have a couple more scriptures and that will be the end. Galatians Three, fourteen through 16. You know what? I'm going to start at verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay, Galatians, that was 3, 14 through 16. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet it is confirmed. No one annuls or adds to it. So he's saying if men have a, a, a promise, a binding agreement, a contract, it, it, it's, it's enforced. Verse 16, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to his seeds, plural, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ, who is Christ. The promise went to Christ, we are chosen to be saved and in Christ, so the, pro so the blessings come on us because we're in Christ. Okay, Galatians 3, 6, 6 and 9. Let me back up a little bit. Uh, okay, uh, 6 through 9. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are Abraham, are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. So we all know that we, we come to Christ, we come to Jesus only because God draws us. He chose us before the world was even made. And, and we already read, we are saved by faith. It's a gift from God, not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. So he not only chose us, he gave us the faith to believe it. So now we are his children. He has prepared us to do good works that he's going to do through us, through each and every one of us. Um, 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. So as we heard in Bible study, the devil doesn't want you to know who you are. You are a child of God. You have a legal right to everything in this Bible. When you speak it, angels have to respond just like that angel came for Daniel. The angels come for you too. Now, it might not, it might take some time. Why? Because the demons are trying to fight them and stop them. But as a child of God, when you speak the word of God, there is movement in the atmosphere that you can't see. 
Demons tremble when you know who you are. A child of God who has a right and the authority to use the name of Jesus, our big brother, who paid for everything for us. So, we're going to 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. 1 Peter, 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation, just like he chose Isaac, just like David went after Mephibosheth to sit at his table all the days of his life. You are chosen to sit at God's table forever. And while you are here, God is doing something good through you. Don't let the devil tell you you don't matter. Don't let the devil tell you, oh, you, you useless now because of, hey, no. Every child of God is being used in some way, form, or fashion. God is doing a good work through you. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yeah. Who once were not a people, but now the people of God. Hallelujah. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. mercy. Hallelujah, you are a child of God. Just think about your physical father. You go right in there and talk to your daddy. That's how you, go, you can hit mer the doors open for you. Go right in and talk to your daddy about whatever you want to. Because Jesus paid for everything. Everything. And God chose you before you even did it the wrong. So, Again, you're a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Yes. When you speak this word, oh, it's happening. It's happening in the, in the spirit realm. It is being done. And every blessing and promise that he said to us is yay and amen. He said, you and your household shall be saved, period. That's a done deal. That means I don't have to worry about my kids. Why? Because I got the promise. You and your household shall be saved. Amen. Lastly, we're going to Revelations 1, 5, and 6. Last verse. Revelations 1, 5, and 6. Don't let the devil talk you out of who you are. They don't want you to know who you are. In Christ. Now by ourselves, uh, we in trouble. But we are children of God. And we are in Christ. And we have the authority to use his name and to use his word. Like we heard this morning, it's a sword. It's swinging and doing everything God wants it to do. It never goes back to him void. It's cutting demons. Demons are running. You just can't see it. But it's happening. Okay, so Revelations chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us what? Kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. You have on the robe of Jesus Christ. You have a crown on your head. You got angels around you, servants. Angels doing what, when you speak the word of God, God got a posse around you to carry it out. Amen. Just like David told me, uh, Zeba, you're going to work the land for, for my feeble chef, but he's going to be sitting at my table. God got angels assigned to you to take care of you and your family. So speak the word. Amen. You are a child of the living God, and you were chosen before you were born. You are not an accident. Hallelujah. And don't let the devil try to bring up the past, because Jesus nailed that to the cross. 
He went through all that pain and suffering for it to be on the cross. Don't let the devil try to drum up what some past stuff. No, you are a new creation, a royal priesthood, God's holy nation, a special people to God. When he see you coming, he like, oh, here come Irma, my daughter. <laughs> Pastor Carl said he think Jesus, God be nut, God the Father nudge Jesus when he see him coming. Like he come again, he come again. But he love you, and he loves seeing you come. We got an open door to go to our Father in heaven, our family on heaven and in earth. We are not some side thought. He thought about us before he even made the planet. Father, I thank you for that word, Lord. I thank you for reminding us that we are chosen and you love us and you've taken care of all things for us. And all we have to do is use your word, speak your word, live your word, do what you tell us to do.